Well, hi there, and welcome to our Sunday Hymn Time. Yes, here on a November Sunday in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, you know, the, the little room that I'm recording this in, uh, we have a little fireplace in this room. Yeah, a real one. Uh, and uh, sometimes, I don't know if you'll hear it, but I can hear the wind whistling through the chimney up there somewhere. Um, but it's not been too bad. No, I mean, I've got my snow tires on, anticipating, you know, uh, getting some of that snow. Although not too far from where I am right now, maybe about an hour or so to uh, to the west of us, they've already had quite a bit of snow at different times this year already. So, uh, yeah. And some of you folks out in western Canada, hmm, noticed a friend of mine's already been snowmobiling this year. Wow, okay, well, here we go. Um, and I hope uh, you're enjoying uh, this Sunday. And I hope you'll appreciate this hymn that I have for you. Uh, it goes back to 1887. And it was written by a woman by the name of Eliza Hewitt. She was a Philadelphia school teacher. She lived from 1851 to 1920. And I was thinking about this song and realizing it's a very simple song. Um, you know, just a verse and a chorus, a verse and a chorus. And then I thought, well, you know, it isn't just in hymns uh, or Christian music, but even, even in our popular songs, you know, most of us, for, for years, you know, you think of verse 1, chorus, verse 2, chorus. You know, that's how a lot of songs are uh, are developed. Now, these days, of course, we add things like bridges and pre-choruses, and that all enhances it so well. But uh, just thought about some of these simple songs, even though they express some pretty profound messages. But uh, when you want to get a congregation of people to sing, and, uh, you know, most of us aren't vocally trained, <clears throat> I'm not. Anyway, uh, as you can tell. But, uh, you know, you want, you want to, but, but people want to sing. People want to sing their praises to God. So, as I said, a simple song, just, just verses and choruses. And um, so uh, maybe by the time I get through a couple of verses, you'll know the chorus at least enough to sing along with me. Mm -hmm. And some of you already know this hymn anyway. It's called more about Jesus, more about Jesus would I know. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus More, more about Jesus More of His saving fullness see More of His love who died for me More about Jesus let me learn More of His holy will Discern, Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness, see, more of his love who died for me. About Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving for. More of his love who died for me More about Jesus on his throne Riches in glory all his own More of his kingdom sure increase More of his coming prince of peace More 
more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus would I know, yeah, more about him. And I was thinking about that. Um, I uh, go through a little video devotional uh, every morning. And uh, right now they're, they're just going through uh, the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, fascinating book, by the way. And uh, we're not sure who wrote it, but um, the uh, kind of like a little line here that's been inserted in my NIV Bible kind of explains the whole story. And it's this. God's final word, his son, Jesus. Yes, Jesus is God's final word. And um, uh, in, in the book of Hebrews, it begins this way. It says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Huh? Wow, I mean, when you begin to go through this book of Hebrews, whoa, you talk about learning more about Jesus, things you maybe wouldn't have even thought of or known before. And Well, we think about, you know, the Creator, God, created the heavens and the earth. Don't know when he did it. Not even 100% sure how, of course. But we do know from this letter here to the, uh, to the Hebrews that he made everything through Jesus. Made everything through Christ. Made the universe through him. Oh, and there's more. Yeah, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. In other words, everything's being held together by Jesus. Um, it says, after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And so God created the universe through Christ. Created it, well, actually he created it for Christ. And the whole thing holds together by Christ. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and well, of course, there's all kinds of other things speaking about the superiority of Jesus to anything that we might have even in the past. And I was thinking about that uh, because, you know, this, as this song says, more about Jesus, Spirit of God, my teacher be, uh, showing the things of Christ to me. And we focus on Him. And uh, that's my encouragement to you, by the way. You know, I mean, I'm always encouraging people. It's what, the reason why I have this little Bible here with me. And, and you know, I'm always encouraging people, hey, go through this book. Yes, get into this book. And, uh, oh, there are some difficult things in here for sure. But uh, I find so much peace and hope and help uh, in, in the pages of this word. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not here to, to share with you my advanced knowledge of the Bible. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, if you've watched enough of these, you know I have no advanced knowledge of pretty much anything, uh, including how to sing. But, but, I want to encourage you as I encourage myself. Do you want to know more about God? Look to Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Um, hey, you want to, you want to find out um, how you're supposed to relate to other people? Look at Jesus. Want to find out, uh, oh, I don't know, what God thinks about how to spend your time, how to spend your money? Look to Jesus. Um, most of us, oh no, we, we look to our creeds and here's what my church denomination teaches me. Oh, those things have their place. But no, you want to know more about how God wants you to live in this world? Look to Jesus. Do you want to know more about what God is actually like? What he thinks about you? Ooh, that's interesting. Well, you'll find out more about God the more you investigate 
who Jesus was. Oh, and I shouldn't even use the word was. No, who Jesus is. Because after he provided purification for sins on that cross, he sat down on the throne of the majesty in heaven. He's alive right now. Mm -hmm. And, oh, do you want to know if he's interested in you? Well, okay, spoiler alert. He's very much interested in you. Yes, yes. Come, approach him. Come to him. God's going to judge everything through his son. And, uh, and not only, you all you'll discover, not only is Jesus the heir of all things, but you and I become joint heirs of Christ when we become part of God's family through our faith in him, in what he did for us on the cross. Purification for sins. Oh, we all need that. And it's provided for us in Jesus. And then study him. Yeah, draw near to him. Find out more, more about Jesus. Not more about religion, not more about, no, no, more about Jesus. And then go live your life for his honor and glory. Um, you'll do it a lot better than I do. Yes, yeah, we all do it imperfectly. You go out and do it better than me. I'll cheer you on. All right, God bless you.